using black watercolour paper and thought, what's that all about? Because watercolour is all about transparency and transparent paint on black paper is just not going to work. I thought that. So I thought, well, rather than just think, oh, weird, I'll go and buy myself a pad of black watercolour paper, see what it's like. I've tried out all sorts of things, different types of paints, white watercolour pencil, even white brush -o, just to see how it behaves on the paper. My name's Liz Chatterton. I'm a watercolour artist based in Berkshire. And every week I bring you a tip, trick or technique that I wish I'd known about ages ago. And this week it's black watercolour paper. It's quite fun. This is literally the first time I have ever used black watercolour in my, my life. So let's see if I can actually open it <laughs> and we'll give it a good test. I selected this black watercolour paper from Clairefontaine for the simple reason that it said one side of the paper is a cold pressed surface and the other side is a rough surface so I thought I could try both of those textures in in one pad. You can also get uh, black watercolour paper from Stonehenge, I believe that is a cotton paper whereas this is cellulose. Uh, in the UK there's Frisk, um, Van Gogh, Clairefontaine and Stonehenge. You can get it in pads, you can get it in sheets as well, particularly the Stonehenge. As far as I've seen, they all seem to come in £140 rather than going up to £200, 250 So they're not available in as wide a range of weights, but I have seen black hot pressed, cold pressed and rough. If I take a sheet out, that is obviously the rough surface and that will be the cold pressed surface. First I'm going to swatch out watercolours on white and black paper because I think that might be quite interesting. And I am going to try some of my normal watercolours. This is just left in the palette from a previous painting. I am going to try these Artistro watercolours which I found very opaque when I tested them out a few weeks ago. And then I've got this set of incredibly cheap, shiny metallic watercolours that I thought I'd try. I thought I'd try masking fluid as well, see how it works on the paper. And then I thought I would try some of those things that you think why did they ever get invented? Like white brusher, uh, white watercolour pencils, white neocolour. I'll try some lifting out as well as the masking fluid to see whether it's robust or whether it all falls to pieces. That is dioxazine purple, beautiful transparent colour. I've put waterproof black lines on this paper which is what you would usually do if you're testing the transparency because then you can see whether the watercolour veils that line. Dioxazine as expected is you know really transparent whereas this lemon yellow is quite opaque it sits on top of that black line so I'm very hopeful of the lemon yellow on the black and very unhopeful of the purple. This is Pyrrhol Orange. There it's looking very opaque. So again, I'm hopeful that that would be good on the black paper. And then this is Quin Magenta. Beautifully transparent. So I'm not thinking that'll do anything on the black paper. This is the Dioxazine Purple. And you can't see anything. This is lemon yellow and yes it shows up obviously looks quite green because of the black coming through it might show up a bit more than that this is the Pyrrhol orange then let's go for the magenta my only surprise actually is that the lemon yellow doesn't show up more let's try a few of these say this was a very cheap set of metallics from Art Sensation. I'm hopeful that 
you know, they, they will show up on the black paper. So as you would expect, they are very opaque because they have that shiny. Let's just get a bit more water in there. I have pre-sprayed these just to loosen the colour so that nice and creamy. And yeah, that gold shows up well. Again, super opaque as we would expect. Green is actually a pretty colour. Looks very different on the white and the black, doesn't it? Yeah, the colour doesn't really show up on the black. So these, literally this set cost, I think, two pounds. Um, so, you know, they don't have any pigment information or anything. They are just for a bit of fun. And that looks more purple on the black paper. The metallics, as we'd expect, very opaque and therefore show up nicely on the black paper. So this was the little set of um, Artistro watercolours. And if you haven't seen my review, please do have a, a look at that. And I've swatched everything out and one of my comments was, oh my goodness, these are so opaque, which didn't really suit my style of painting but of course will absolutely suit working on black paper again i did pre-spray them but let's give them a little bit more of a splurge so traditionally in in watercolor we don't use white because watercolor is all about transparency so transparent white just isn't a thing but let's have a look here Yep, yeah, that's pretty good if we're wanting things to show up. Now we've already done lemon yellow just from sitting in my palette. Let's do their lemon yellow. It's brighter than the one I had in my palette, which possibly was a bit contaminated. So let's do that side by side. Again, really shows through green, but it's rather nice. This deep yellow was pretty opaque. It wasn't deep yellow. I went into one that they call flesh, sorry that these are showing up well aren't they now that's interesting so expensive artists pigments which of course are all about the transparency don't show up half as well as the the cheaper student quality ones it takes on a, a real brownish tinge but we're not surprised because that sort of black and red will let's just keep going through and picking out some of the the most opaque and the turquoise in this set i found very opaque That mauve was very opaque. Now Viridian usually is a lovely transparent colour, but I found this pretty opaque. So it sort of shows, but again, not brilliant. I wonder how they're fluorescence. This little set's got some fluorescence. I wonder what they look like. I mean, you would have thought they would be pretty good on the black paper. Yeah. So a few surprises there. So I was expecting the Pyrrhal orange to work a lot or to, or to show up a lot better on the black than it does. So the purple you can hardly see, the quinacrinone magenta you can hardly see, not a surprise. The cheaper opaque opaque more opaque colors definitely show up more on the black i'm just going to put some masking fluid down because i want to check how easily it comes off this paper because masking fluid on the whole is more prone to rip a cellulose paper and the, the reason for that is the fibres of cellulose are a lot shorter than the fibres of cotton. They're, they're weaker, so it's more prone to that ripping. So we'll just put that there and let it, let it dry. Let's try some wet in wet. I'm just going to wet this surface here. Why don't we just wet a little there, just so we have got that comparison. And then grab some colour. Let's see if I... 
You know, does it behave as you would expect watercolour to, to behave? With soft edges and mingling of colours. Let's add a bit more water on there. Now, th these colours are not lively on the surface at all, which was one of my, my gripes when I was reviewing them. So I'm not expecting them to sort of zip around and be exciting, but I do want to see those soft edges which are so gorgeous in watercolour. Let's put some blue on there so we can see what's going to happen. And we'll put some blue in there. Now I want to try white watercolour pencil. These are actually dough and ink tense pencils. So let's see, because I can imagine that a white pencil would be very useful for sketching something out if you're doing that. See how it blends on this paper. So yes, it can blend away totally. This is a white neo colour. If you haven't come across neo colours, they say they're water soluble wax pastels. So posh crowns to you and I. And again, shows up very nicely on the surface. Let's see how well that does blend away. And it can blend away to a very gentle wash like that. Next thing I would like to try is brusho. Again, if you've not come across brusho, they are ink crystals, really vibrant. They really sort of explosive on the surface. And I've always wondered why on earth they put white brusho in, because brusho is incredibly transparent. So there's a little hole in the top here. Let's see how much it shows up on the surface. Well, it does show up there. And what happens if we, we blend it? Yep, we do get a wash. Well, it's not hugely opaque, but we wouldn't expect it to be. I think you'd have to build that up in layers. I have got, oh, what a state these are in. These are Schmincke Aqua Powders. And they are little metallic powders. Hope you can see that. And they have a binder mixed in with them so that you can either add water and make them into a liquid form or you can sprinkle them into a damp wash and they're beautiful. So where should we do this? Up here. Oh, they're cool. That really shows up on the surface, doesn't it? Wet that there. Just tap into that wet surface. I think you could do a lot with those. Yeah, masking fluid is dry, so let's choose a colour. Oh, I don't know. Let's go for that fluorescent yellow because it seems to show up pretty well on the black. So let's give it a good chance of showing us what it can do and we'll put some of that fluorescent orange there. Right, let's dry that and then we'll see how easy that masking is to remove. I am going to hair dryer this and usually I would say don't use a hair dryer and masking fluid because it will cook it to the paper. I'm doing it deliberately to give it a bit of a tough touch. So our masking fluid and our paint is dry. So let's see what happens when we rub our masking fluid off. I can't feel it ripping the paper. That came off pretty cleanly. Well, that's actually a very pleasant surprise. I wasn't sure how it would lift off the surface. I think we've given this a little try. And our learnings are that your lovely transparent artist quality watercolour, even the opaque ones, are really not going to do an awful lot on um, black paper. Say the dramatic one is to compare that pyrrole orange, so vibrant on the white, just nothing on the black. Metallics, as we might expect, very opaque and they show up. In fact, if we sort of move them, they glitter better, I think, on the black than they do on the white. It does alter the colour because the black comes through. So, for example, this, which was the light blue, 
definitely looks more sort of silver or, or grey on, on the black. And then these were my student quality paints that I had moaned about their opacity, but they are spot on for on this uh, black. Particularly the, the fluorescence seem to be pretty good on there. They don't glow in the same way as they do on the white paper, but they certainly have good contrast. Contrast. Love the aqua bronze. Wasn't expecting that on, on the black. That will be really good. It only occurred to me sort of a second before I started filming this. Masking seems to work really well. Wet and wet, yes, we get soft edges, so that's good. And then some of those sort of white things that you wonder why they've given them to you um, might come in handy. The very final thing we need to do is check lifting. So I've got a short flat brush that hopefully is clean. I've taken off the majority of the water and I am going to lift. Well that lifts pretty much back to the black which is rather good. Let's have another go. I wonder how these metallics lift. I have no idea. Hmm. Not terribly well, that's interesting. About the fluorescence. Yep, they oop <laughs> stuck to me. They lift I don't know about the aqua bronze. Let's try. Oh no, the aqua bronze is very I'd really have to scrub at that. I mean you can lift it eventually, but that seems to be well stuck. Metallics are going to be harder to lift. The opaque ones are sitting on the surface so they seem to be relatively easy to lift. So having put that black paper through its paces we now know which paints we're going to be able to use to to really sort of pop on it and I think we need to have an, a play and actually paint a picture. I'm using the reverse side of our sample sheet so this is what they call the rough uh, texture and I say it really isn't very rough and I'm using those Artistro paints and really trying to use the shape of the brush to make the leaves and the petals. And I'm having to work hard to get any flowing of colours into each other because these paints really don't flow on the surface. I'm making sure that I change the shape and the size of all my marks just to make it a little bit more interesting and leaving little flashes of the black coming through. Now again, I'm goodness knows what sort of leaves these are, but I'm just making sort of blobs and leaves just to, to make a pleasing shape. It would be good to work in layers and see how that, that goes. That'll have to be the next step. I'll put a full length version of this or at least, uh, I mean, this is about 16 times the speed, I think, but um, I'll put a, a slower version on as well if you do want to paint along with me. But I'm just trying to enjoy the colours and make a really good variety of shapes. I've dried it off and then I thought, well, those metallics were showing up really nicely. Let's use some of those to just add a little dimension and a little layer. At this point I couldn't resist doing a bit of splatter just to break things up because I hadn't got the flow of colour that I usually love. So black watercolour paper is a lot of fun and just worth adding to your repertoire.